the patient is in their disease, how sick they are, how impaired they are in their pulmonary physiology, or how much oxygen they may need, certainly may guide your evaluation and assessment and discussions with the patient. Uh, there'll be times where you, we may consider lung transplantation uh, candidacy uh, sooner rather than later for patients. And the same thing goes for palliative care and hospice discussions. So the two new therapies uh, that we have available that have been FDA approved for the treatment of pulmonary fibrosis are nintetinib and profenadone. They slow the disease progression by about 50%, but patients may not necessarily feel better. And I think that's a very critical impor uh, and important point to get across to patients. Expectations are key to helping them maintain compliance and be able to take these medications for the long term. We've been involved from the very beginning at my uh, academic medical center with clinical trials with both nintetinib and profenadone. And have followed patients who have been in clinical trials onto open label studies and ultimately onto uh, prescription therapy once the medications have been approved. We've had patients uh, tolerate one better than the other. And if they couldn't tolerate one, be able to take switch and take the other one and tolerate it well in both directions. It's really nice in this situation uh, where prior to 2014, we had no therapeutic options to now have two therapeutic options and have a choice for patients. This is really uh, an exciting area of research that's uh, ongoing right now um, regarding the use of antifibrotic therapy for interstitial lung diseases in the context of autoimmune diseases. So there are two antifibrotic therapies um, that are currently approved for the treatment of idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis. And there are ongoing studies right now to evaluate the efficacy of these antifibrotic treatments for the treatment of progressive fibrosing lung disease in scleroderma. So I'm, I'm certainly really excited to see what, what the trial results are showing. Recently, um, there is an application to the FDA for a tra fast track approval for an intentative. So um, really excited to see the, the phase three results of the trials that are currently underway for use of these antifibrotic therapies in the context of scleroderma related ILD. We've learned a lot about uh, treatment and our prior standard of care therapies in patients with idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis since the first multicenter trials were started in IPF in the late 1990s. From the IPF Network Panther study, we learned that immunosuppressive medicines such as corticosteroids and Imuran are not helpful. In fact, may be harmful for patients with idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis. In scleroderma, we don't tend to see a lot of benefits with um, use of corticosteroids. Um, corticosteroids also has uh, particular risks in the context of scleroderma, especially early on in the setting of a lot of skin involvement. They can also, corticosteroids can increase the risk of something called scleroderma renal crisis. And as we don't see a lot of necessarily, I guess, long-term benefits with the use of corticosteroids, or you really don't tend to use them as much um, or at all. In patients, for example, with inflammatory myopathies with interstitial lung diseases, um, we do see some benefits and will often use them in the context of interstitial lung disease or really active muscle disease. Um, so in other conditions, perhaps if if interstitial lung disease is underlying lupus, for example, um, then we may use uh, steroids in that context too. So really from, from a rheumatology standpoint, uh, the, the use of steroids really depends on what autoimmune condition is underlying the interstitial lung disease.